When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Christian Church Online. It's great to have you all with us. Don't be afraid to share this uh, service and time of worship with friends and family and other ones. I'm Chris Pulliam. I'm the senior minister of the church here at First Christian Church in Tyler, Texas, and it is great to be with you on this Pentecost Sunday the day on which God sent His Holy Spirit to dwell among us and live within us. So if the Big C, capital C Church has a birthday, today is it. So a couple of notes from our congregation. Congratulations to Tom and Ann DeWitt, who celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary this week on Wednesday. Also, our sympathies go out to the family and friends of both Dolores Kendall and Bob Bunce, who both passed away here recently. Doris was a faithful member of our church, having come over to First Christian from University Christian Church. Uh, she was a lot of fun to be around. I uh, remember the years of her being able to attend here. Bob Bunce passed away recently also. He was a longtime member of our church. Uh, my memories of Bob were of him coming to church with his granddaughter and two of her 20-something friends, which made Bob the coolest octogenarian in the room. Well, we will miss them both and uh, ask God's blessing upon both of their families. So if you haven't already gathered together your communion supplies, you'll need something to serve as bread, something to serve as the cup. Uh, have your cell phone with you and a checkbook if you would. So we'll go ahead and pass the peace of Christ right now. Uh, if, if you have a, your cell phone nearby, would you please text the word peace to at least five other people you might normally see on a uh, Sunday morning. Uh, send your peace to them. If you are not a texting person, then uh, write down the names of a few other people. You can call later today and wish them your peace. All right, let's do that now.
us pray. Eternal God, once again, you have smiled upon us and allowed us to see another blessed day, and we thank you. We thank you, dear Father, that we can face each day with hope in our hearts because you are in control. We pray that you will comfort those who have lost loved ones, as well as those with broken hearts and broken spirits. May you keep us in your perfect peace by inspiring us to pray, to give, to love, and to serve so that the name of Jesus Christ might be glorified around the world. As you walk with us, free us from fear. We place our trust in you. Now let us pray together the prayer that your son Jesus has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Acts, first Acts, verse 8, and I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Will you please join me in prayer? Almighty God, if we can think of nothing else to be thankful for, we can be thankful that you want to enter into a conversation with us at any time. We call this prayer, Lord. Lord, let us listen to you and tell you what is on our hearts. Our hearts have been troubled these past months. We have been taken out of our norm we have not known how to handle these special circumstances, but we do know one thing, that we could always come to you and for you always love to hear our voices. We thank you for that and because of Jesus, we can claim a family relationship with you. You are our father and we are your children. And today we say thank you. Lord, our life is a series of defining moments. They're strung together by passing of time. These last months have truly been defining moments. And we had to surrender fully to those moments, but you walked with us as our guide, and we are once again moving ahead, Lord. We know we can never bring anything to you that's too hard for you. We have power over our fears, our health, our relationships, and this church that we call home. Gathering here today, we remember those who are sick and those who are far away from us. We will be listening to your word today and our hearts will be listening to your spirit. We pray that you will open our eyes so that we can see your involvement in our lives and open our ears so we can hear your voice and open our hearts that we can love. Lord, you have designed us to find our happiness in loving you and by loving our neighbors as ourselves. By this, we are known as your disciples and we can only hope that our lives be so good that people will say, look at those ordinary people and how they love each other. Let the only explanation be that we have been with Jesus. We thank you are a promised God we thank you that you're finished, that you finish what you start, that you 
who have begun a good work in us and in those we love will never give up. We thank you that you are always waiting for us at the door with open arms, whether at church or work or at home. We say amen now, Lord, but this is not the end of our prayer. Remind us that you will be listening for our voice always. Remind us to talk to you. May you, our most holy God, have a wonderful Sunday because your family is home now and always will be. Amen. Satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you I never really thought of Tyler, Texas as the ends of the earth, but I guess depending on where you start, maybe so. My first visit to First Christian Church in Tyler, Texas happened in the summer of 2007. The Pulliam family was in East Texas for a big family wedding over in Longview. Uh, my wife Lisa and I had just heard from a colleague that the church in Tyler was looking for a new minister. Uh, over the weekend, Lisa kept talking about it over and over again. She said, we ought to at least check it out while we're here. I wasn't particularly interested. I loved the life and ministry I had there in Arkansas. Things were going just great. But to get her to stop talking about this, I thought I at least had to throw something her way. So I said, gave her this one, which I knew she would never accept. I said, okay, then let's go worship there tomorrow morning. It's right in the middle of a big wedding weekend. I just knew there was no way she would surrender any time with her extended family, her grandmother, her cousins. I thought I was safe. But then she said, okay, let's do it. So it was a rainy Sunday morning. All six of the Pulliams uh, pulled up. We brought more family with us, her sister's family, six more. So 12 of us arrive late to what was then the contemporary service in this room. Uh, Jackie Rollins greeted us that morning. Before Lisa, and beforehand, Lisa and I had agreed that we would not tell anyone 
that I was a minister. We would just go incognito, although I'm not sure both of us kept that promise that morning. So after the service, I, I was ready to leave, but Lisa had been inspired by something your interim minister, Ron Sumter, had said. Well, fast forward a few days, maybe a week later, sitting in my office in the church in Rogers, Arkansas, and I got a call from the area minister, Reverend Caretha Lothridge, asking if I would be interested in considering uh, this position here at First Christian Church in Tyler. Now, I'll say I pretty much always say no to those calls, uh, but for some reason that day, I said yes. So over those next few months, I began to believe and sense that this is what God was calling me to do. So uh, the process uh, ha had lots of ups and downs, uh, but I guess you could say the rest is history. And boy, am I sure glad we came. What a wonderful group of people you are. What a wonderful church family and how blessed I am and, and we are as a family uh, to be here. You know, fast forward then all the way to Thursday, March 19th of this year. And I'm standing here in this spot in this pulpit and I'm, Travis Bowles is kind of a getting me in focus and I'm kind of looking around the empty sanctuary and I look over there to my left and the parlor door is open and I can see all the way through there to my predecessors, pictures on the wall on the back of the parlor. Hmm. They were sort of smiling, chuckling maybe, and uh, somehow encouraging me. It was as though they were collectively saying, never seen anything like COVID-19 but hang in there, you'll be okay. So uh, watch this video now. So here we are in the parlor of First Christian Church. Perhaps you've been in here before, perhaps not. It's just to the right of our worshiping sanctuary. So in here we have this wall of pictures of uh, my predecessors. Uh, there I am, of course, down there. Here's Jeff Wilson. There's Earl Gibbs. There's Joe Grubbs over here. This is Gene Whitley and Fred McCown and Loyal Northcutt. Now, I don't know all the stories, but I do know that I stand on their shoulders today. Not only their shoulders and not just myself, we all stand on the shoulders uh, of these people, yes, and a whole lot of others, many others from our congregation, uh, many of whom are here today, and a whole lot of whom have gone on ahead of us. We stand on their shoulders today. Around the turn of the 18th century, leading into the 19th century, some disgruntled Scottish Presbyterians named Thomas and Alexander Campbell came to make a new life on the American frontier. So in 1801, at a place in Kentucky called Cane Ridge, there was a revival that drew tens of thousands of people to this rural area. This was an amazing crowd of people gathered there. So in the original story of Pentecost, which we'll get to in a moment, um, the disciples had what looked like tongues of fire that came to rest on them. Well, at Cane Ridge, I didn't hear any reports of any tongues of fire, but show sure enough, the Spirit did, in fact, show up in a big way. So that was 200 years ago. 500 years ago, Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses on the doors to the church there in Wittenberg, Germany. And what we now know as the Protestant Reformation began. 500 years before that, some well-meaning type A European Christians uh, traveled on horseback toward Jerusalem to win back the Holy Land from the Muslim invaders. These crusades, as they were called, were not successful. So rewind even further to the year 311, and we find the Emperor Constantine, who came to believe in Jesus. So today we would say he was saved, he made his confession of faith, whatever that is. But, but this Christian movement that had been up until that point a bunch of ragtag peasants for the most part, persecuted and scorned, suddenly had the backing of the emperor himself. 
the most powerful person in the world. And coming with that was all of his power and wealth and pomp and circumstance. Well, fast forward again another 250 years or so, and we find Jesus, at the mid-first century, we find Jesus' apostles uh, going out through the known world preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. And all but one of those apostles were martyred for their faith. Do you know which one was not? Extra points. I I'll give you the answer to that before the service is over, all right? And prior to that, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, the capital C Church was born when the Holy Spirit came to dwell in all the believers. We call that day Pentecost, and we celebrate it today, 50 days after Easter. Okay, that was a lot. Thank you for hanging in there with me. We made it through uh, kind of a, a fast walk backward through uh, time, kind of a Forrest Gump movie in reverse, sort of, right? So back to our scripture reading for this morning, which Don Cooper read for us, that one verse in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, when the resurrected Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So that was my opening line about Tyler maybe being the ends of the earth. So I love this particular verse, this Acts 1.8. And somehow, by walking through time and history backwards to it, somehow, at least in my heart and mind, those words became even stronger, even more powerful, more poignant, if you will. Because if the proof is in the pudding, we can look back and say with complete confidence that Jesus was right. These words of his weren't just empty words he was throwing out for his people, his followers, did indeed and still are his witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, we and he still need witnesses to go into the jungles, into the far reaches, or to go to the other side of town, or even just next door. One of my mentors from years ago, Roy Key, used to say, he said, my job as a Christian is to be a witness. I don't have to tell you what to believe. I don't have to tell you how to live. I just can tell you what I have experienced and what I have seen I have to be a witness. So to begin this morning, I walked us through a, a few of the major events of the history of the church. And I did so because I have this sense, uh, something tells me that what we are experiencing now, this pandemic, is going to go down in church history as another major event. Because ministry may never be the same again. So I, I got this on your screen there from Tracy Hughes from our congregation. And just like that, all my preacher friends became televangelists, it says. Old Forrest is right. Never, I never dreamed of being a televangelist, but now my face is all over the Internet. I mean, hours and hours of content with my face right there in the middle of it. And just like that, all of my friends, my colleagues, other preacher friends were, were online. They're being televangelists too. And a whole bunch of you, my church friends, worshiping friends, are worshiping online. Sitting there at home, and it's pretty nice, isn't it? I mean, all in my jammies, with my coffee cup, sitting at the kitchen table or there in the, in the, in the den. 45 minutes, and we're done. Yeah, this is good, isn't it? We're having between 1,000 and 2,000 views of what we're putting online each week. Here's my shout out to mom and dad. Hi mom, hi dad, happy 65th wedding anniversary to you this week. Awfully proud of you. Uh, you know, we've, we've averaged, there, there are some of the ones who are tuning in to our worship, right? So uh, we've averaged over the last number of years plus or minus 250 people in worship. 
And so um, some of you will say, well, this is great. We're up 400, 800 percent. This is amazing. And others of you will point out, but who are these people? And how can we minister to them if we don't even know them? And will they ever support our ministry with their, their service or their prayers or their, their gifts? See, ministry is going to look different. And we better keep up. So, you know, for health reasons or, or for just general concern about being in crowds, uh, a whole lot of our folks aren't going to be coming back to church anytime soon. And I bet there'll be some amongst us who may never come back. So then the question becomes then, well, will that, will that mean that they're no longer part of our church? And the 20th century answer to that would be yes, but not so in the 21st century. Oh, sure, they'll still be part of our church, but there will be a different kind of church member, won't they? So the, the small g good news about this is th these people will cost us very little. We, they don't need a seat in the sanctuary. They don't need a parking place in the parking lot. They don't need a nursery to care for their children. And best of all, they won't eat any of the cookies during the fellowship time. This is great, right? But on the other hand, those people won't be around to talk to and get to know. They won't stand beside us and sing praises to God. They won't put a hand on our shoulder during the time of prayer. They won't help serve the coffee. So that's why I say this moment is probably a big one in the history of the church. Because like it or not, COVID-19 has hit, pushed the accelerator on change and innovation. So, so what am I trying to say? What's my message here? That through the century, the church has been through a lot. From upside down crucifixions to being fed to the lions to fast forward all the way to last week to people passionately discussing whether or not masks should be worn in worship on May 31st. So the bottom line is this. We're still going. For the last 2,000 years, ministry has been happening in Jesus' name, and I don't see that coming to an end ever. What I'm asking us to do is I'm asking you to join me in finding new ways to speak and live for Christ in our community and world. I'm asking you to join me in keeping up your financial support, your prayerful support, your service to and with and through this congregation in support of the old ways of doing ministry which we've come to count on and in support of these new ways which we are dreaming up. Thanks to COVID-19, we've ramped up our ministry way, way beyond the corner of the Loop and Broadway. Today, We'll worship on campus for the first time in 10 weeks. And we'll worship online as well. Can you hear my predecessors in the other room there kind of laughing and shaking their heads in disbelief? 10 weeks with no one in the sanctuary. Easter Sunday and not a soul on campus. Never seen that. Well, as your leader, I want to say this. Now is not the time to pull back, but instead to press forward with excellent ministry to the ends of the earth. But let us not forget that in this we are not alone, that our Lord Jesus himself has promised us power in this, strength provision, perseverance, innovation, leadership, and best of all, the Holy Spirit to show us the way. Like he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 
Let us pray together. Lord, we lift up our church and our ministry to you. Help us to keep the faith. Lord, may we lean in on the power of your Holy Spirit. Would you give us your wisdom and grace as your witnesses today and always? For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord knew that we would need help when he was gone from us. So he sent us a helper, a counselor, this Holy Spirit of God. And he gave us this table to do this in remembrance of him. In a second after Marilyn prays for us, um, I ask you to partake at home where you are there of the bread. But would you please hold the cup for we will partake of it together at the close of our time around this table. So on Jesus' last earthly night with us, he took bread and he blessed it and he gave it to him and said, take and eat for this is my body broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. Let us pray together. Most Holy Father, we come before you and confess that you alone are the living God. We pray that you would still our minds and quiet our souls as we approach this communion table today. We ask that you prepare our hearts as we partake of this bread and this wine. We do this in remembrance of your broken body and the blood you shed. Amen. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of him. Would you join me now in our affirmation of faith? We believe Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, and accept him as Lord and Savior. Amen. So again, today, as an act of our worship, we are going to receive our offering now. There are multiple ways to give, as I'm sure you know. And it's important to give in some way. So thank you once again for your generosity. As for our announcements this morning, uh, we are planning to offer both contemporary and traditional worship services next Sunday on campus and, of course, online at 930. So however that serves you best, please do so. Again, even as we begin to worship again on campus, we'll be continuing our services online. Uh, we realize that some of you can't wait to get back while others of you really can't get back or don't feel safe getting back yet. Both of those options are just fine. Uh, we have multiple options for your worshiping pleasure. Uh, I'll tell you that our Mother's Day Out Summer Session continues this week. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 8.30 to 2.30 for ages uh, birth through six years of age. Uh, help us spread the word, and uh, if you need information, you can contact Carolyn Wallace and the uh, Mother's Day Out office. Uh, by the way, I'll toss this in there, the answer to my trivia question from mid-sermon, which was which of the apostles was not martyred for his faith? The answer is the apostle John, who was exiled to the island of Patmos. And from that island, in his old age, he wrote the book of Revelation. So, all right. Well, let's sing where the spirit of the Lord is, and then we'll be dismissed. i
Thank you all for joining us once again today. I invite you to connect with First Christian Church through any of the number of uh, different ways online. We would welcome you to do that. Uh, we will have a children's moment today at 1040, and our Sunday school offerings will happen at 11 a.m. invite you to join in on that. And next Sunday, uh, you may join us here on campus for worship or, again, online. We would welcome you there. Let us pray together as we are dismissed. Oh God, send your Holy Spirit into every aspect of our lives, into every corner of our world. Stir your spirit where renewal is needed. Awaken your spirit in us individually and collectively. Again, we ask us to, that you would show us new ways to speak and live for Christ in our community and world. And again, we ask that you would guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whose name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen.